This part 81 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss range attribute. Range attribute checks if the value of a data field is within a specified range of values. We'll be working with the example that we started in part 80. So please watch part 80 before proceeding. At the moment, we don't have any validation in place whatsoever on this age field. And because of that, I can enter a value of 5000 for age and then once I click Save, look at that, it gets saved to the database. And it's impractical for an employee to have an age of 5000. So let's enforce a validation on this field so that the end user can only enter a value between 1 and 100. So how do we enforce that validation? We can very easily do that by using range attribute and then specifying the minimum and maximum values as you can see here. So let's flip to Visual Studio. First of all, let's add our property. So public age is of type integer, so int age. And let's specify the get and set accessors. And then let's decorate this property with range attribute. And then this constructor has got several overloaded versions. Look at this, there are six of them. I'm going to use the one which takes the minimum and maximum values as integers. So the minimum range is going to be 1 and the maximum is going to be 100. So now let's go ahead and build our solution and let's reload this view. At the moment within the database we have a value of 5000 so that will be reloaded and then look at this when I click save we get the validation message as expected the field age must be between 1 and 100 but then if I change it to 30 which is between 1 and 100 and then once in I click save look at that it should get saved as expected. All right, this range attribute can also be used with date time data types. At the moment, this employee doesn't have um, any fields of type date time. So first of all, let's go ahead and alter the definition of the stable TBL employee to include a column of type date. So alter table TBL employee, and we want to add higher date column of type date. Obviously this column will have null value so let's go ahead and update the data. Alright so we have some data to work with. Now we have updated the table but then we have already generated the entity data model so let's go ahead and update our model so that the newly added column is also included in this data model. So double click on the model and then right click on this model and select this option update model from database. So this should connect to the database and then click on this refresh tab. So which should list the tables that are already there within our model and then we can refresh them. So click on refresh tab, expand tables, select our table TBL employee. Look at this at the moment we don't have higher date property listed there. But then once we click finish it should generate a property for higher date. Okay, so there we go. And let's build our solution so that this employee class is compiled. All right, now look at this. When we click edit and navigate to the edit view, within the edit view, you know, the higher date uh, property will not be displayed. That's because we have already generated the code, the HTML, within the edit view. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this HTML to include higher date as well. So I just copied those two div tags and pasted them here and then let's change the property names. So instead of model.gender that's going to be model.higher date. So let's copy and replace. All right. So let's build our solution now. And then when we refresh our edit view we should get higher date as well. Okay, so we get higher date. First of all, let's fix this display. Uh, we don't want time to be displayed. So let's get rid of that time. And to get rid of that time, we can use um, another attribute that's present. So let's go to our employee class. So we can use display format attribute. So let's first of all include our higher date property. So public and higher date is of type date time.
okay so let's go ahead and use display format attribute and then specify our look at this this attribute has got several overloaded versions um, I'm going to I mean there are two overloaded versions I'm going to use this overloaded version where we can specify the named parameters so we need to specify the data format string so let's go ahead and specify that so since we want um, you know short date that is only the date part of the date time to be displayed I'm going to specify a data format string of 0 colon d and that needs to be present within the curly braces all right so let's build this and then let's go ahead and refresh this view and see if it works as expected look at that it still doesn't work that's because we need to turn on a flag there's another named parameter called apply format in edit mode and we need to set that to true so basically we are telling it to apply this formatting even in edit mode by default it will not be applied but we want that to be applied so apply format in edit mode equals true so let's build this and let's refresh this now look at that it works as expected now I also want a validation in place you know the higher date should be between um, you know 1 1 2000 and 1 1 2010 okay so at the moment even if I include you know something like um, 2 2 2 and click Save it still saves that but I don't want that I want uh, date basically to be between 2000 and 2010 so how do we do that validation again use range attribute but then we are going to use a different overloaded constructor now where we can specify the data type as well okay so here along with the display format attribute I'm going to use range attribute and then look at this we are going to use this overloaded constructor where we can specify the type the minimum value and the maximum value so to get the type we use type of keyword so type of date time and then we specify the minimum and maximum value so the minimum value is going to be 0 1 0 1 2000 maybe 2000 and our maximum value is going to be 2010 All right so let's build this and now let's try to reload this one and then we'll try to up, update that okay so let's click save and look at that the field higher date must be between 1 1 2000 and 1 1 2010 so it works as expected so if I give something like 2002 and click save look at that it gets saved as expected now look at this higher date property is not displayed on the index view and to display that it's straightforward again include that within your include that property within the index view so first of all we need a header so let's copy the table header and then specify model dot higher date for some reason it's not displayed but let's type that there and then let's include another TD here okay so let's build this and let's refresh this index view we should see higher date as well there there we go and this higher date property I mean when the range attribute is used with date time fields the client side validation doesn't work as expected we'll discuss this in a later video session um, in fact in our future sessions we'll see uh, how to enable client side validation as well at the moment we only have server side validation so all the validations uh, that are there on this employee class are happening on the server side at the moment but in our future sessions we'll see how to enable client-side validations and once we do that this date time um, 
fields, you know, when these daytime fields are used with range attribute, they don't work quite as expected. And we'll see how to fix them at that point of that time. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.